So we've said what EA equals R means. EA equals R means E is non-singular, A is any matrix, and R is the reduced row echelon form of A. And then we, we paused for a moment and said what this idea of an elementary matrix is. An elementary matrix is obtained from one row operation on an identity matrix. Now the question is, well, how does that help us figure out what E A equals R is? So in other words, if you have the matrix A, how do you figure out the matrix E? Well, remember, the way we go from A to R is by using the Gauss-Jordan algorithm with elementary row operations. So you start with your matrix A, you do your first operation to get to a new matrix, you do your second operation to get to another matrix, and you keep doing operations until you arrive at the reduced row echelon form of A. Well, um, if you think about it, each one of those elementary row operations manifests itself as an elementary matrix. So you could keep track of all of the elementary row operations you use to get from A to the reduced row echelon form. And then you can define all of those uh, uh, row operations as elementary matrices. So what are we really doing? If on one hand, you can think of elementary row operations as getting you a sequence of matrices until you terminate at the reduced row echelon form. But elementary matrices allow you to view this as an equation. Let's say you start with the matrix A. When you do your first elementary row operation, that's the same thing as multiplying by your first elementary matrix. Then you do your second elementary row operation. That's the same thing as then multiplying by your second elementary matrix. Then you do your third operation. That's the same as multiplying by your third elementary matrix. And you keep multiplying by these elementary matrices until you've reached your last elementary row operation. When all is said and done, this entire product should end up equaling the reduced row echelon form of A. So what have we done here? Well, if you think about it, what we're doing is we're taking A and then we're multiplying on the left by all of these elementary matrices to produce the reduced row echelon form of A. So all that's left to do is define E as the product of all of these elementary matrices. E is equal to the last elementary matrix multiplied by the second to last, all the way down to the third times the second times the first in this order. If we define E to be the product of all of these elementary matrices, we now have the equation E times A equals R. And because elementary matrices are invertible, we know that E itself is also invertible and therefore non-singular. So let's see this in action. Here, I've used the Gauss-Jordan algorithm to row reduce this three by two matrix A to its reduced row echelon form R. It took me three elementary row operations to do this. The first operation was uh, I took the second row and subtracted four times the uh, first. And then that left me with a legit first pivot column. Then in the two, two position, I'll, I'll have a pivot, but I had to clear out the two in the one, two position and the one in the three, two position. And I use that with two row additions. We take row one and subtract two row two, and then we take row three and subtract row two. So it took me three row operations to get from A to R. So what we can do now is we can define each of the elementary matrices that represent those row operations. So uh, the first elementary matrix is the uh, elementary matrix obtained by applying the operation row two minus four row one to the three by three identity matrix. E2 here is the matrix obtained by performing row one minus two row two on the three by three identity matrix. And then our third elementary matrix is the three by three matrix obtained by performing row three minus row two goes to the new row three on the three by three identity matrix. So each one of these elementary matrices are constructed independently of one another. But now the idea is that if I multiply them in this order, E3 times E2 times E1, I can define E to be that product. And that gives me E times A equals R. So in this case, this gives me E uh, having columns nine, negative four, four, when I, uh, and then negative two, one, negative one and zero, zero, one. 
Uh, this is what happened when I multiplied all, of, all three of these elementary matrices together. So what we're finding is that the Gauss-Jordan algorithm is useful for getting us from A to R, but we can codify all of that work into one single matrix called E. And now, as we saw uh, previously, we can use this factorization to solve all sorts of problems. If you give me a vector B and ask me to solve AX equals B, I don't have to do any row reductions because I've already done them here. What I can do is I can replace AX equals B with RX equals EB, which is already reduced for me. So uh, EA equals R is a very powerful uh, tool. Uh, and I like to think of it as someone's being very generous uh, if they give you E and EA equals R because like E sort of unlocks uh, uh, lots of problems uh, uh, involving A. Uh, cool. So that's all, uh, that's all I have to say about computing EA equals R.